Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, those who followed him and helped him in his way. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness fi dunya wal akhirah. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Let us open this gathering by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha as a gift to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us also recite Surah Al-Fatiha, the intention that this session will go smoothly and that this online gathering of a community who is in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be blessed by him, inshaAllah. Ila hawlat al-Nabi al-Mustafa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Fatiha. Dearest Ustaz, fellow schoolmates and guests of this blessed gathering, allow me to begin with the most humble greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to our third session for this academic year, coming to you live from Masjid Wak Tanjong. My name is Muhammad Anas and I'll be your MC for this afternoon, inshallah. For those joining us for the first time, allow me to share a little bit about what G2G is all about. Guide to Goodness is a ground up initiative supported by the NUS Muslim Society that provides classes focusing on the sciences of Islamic spirituality and Islamic sacred knowledge. G2G envisions itself to be a guide to goodness for all and aims to uplift our community with Islamic spirituality. Inshallah, today's session will be conducted by Ustaz Mukhtar. Ustaz studied Islamic jurisprudence from Rubat Tarim under the tutelage of eminent scholars such as Habib Salim bin Abdullah Ashatiri and Habib Abdullah bin Umar bin Sumaid. Ustaz Mukhtar is currently the mosque religious officer of Masjid Wak Tanjong. This is the first of the four-part mini-series on making intentions. Today's topic is entitled, The Port of Call, Renewing Intentions. Inshallah, Ustaz Mokhtar will be guiding us through a framework to make righteous intentions in our everyday life, especially in the context of a seeker of knowledge. Throughout the session, should you have any questions, please feel free to post them on the main chat or send me privately. Without further ado, I would like to invite Ustaz Mokhtar to deliver his lecture. Ustaz, please. Alhamdulillahi <laughs> Ya <laughs> سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إن كانت العليم الحكيم إلهي أنت مقصود ورضاك مدود عتيم محبة فمعرفة الحمد لله we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى for granting us this topic that we are able to gather virtually to be seated in the gathering of knowledge the gathering where Allah سبحانه وتعالى has promised that uh, he will forgive the sins of those who attend the gatherings of knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who attain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we would like to thank our host, uh, Brother Muhammad Anas, son of Tariq. Son of Bin. Son of Bin. Son of Tariq. Uh, thank you very much for calling me to give a talk today. Inshallah, may Allah bless. 
May Allah bless you and your team, inshallah, uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, today's uh, topic is a very good topic. It's a topic where uh, the scholars uh, Khalid said it as half of deen, half of the religion, which uh, we talk about intention. So intention is half of the deen, half of the religion, and the other half will be the action, will be the, the outward uh, ibadah after the intention. Uh, for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, we know this hadith uh, from Sayyidina Umar al Khattab. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Innama al-a'malu bin niyad, innama li kulli mriyin ma'anawa. Apparently, all our actions is based on intention. And every person will earn what he intends. What is his intention? فَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَاتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُسِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَ الْدِنْيَا كَعِبَا فَهِجْرَاتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجْرَ إِلَيْهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَاتُهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَاتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَاتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَاتُهُ لِدُنْيَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَاتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجْرَ إِلَيْهِ رَوَاهُ in making hijrah is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, he will earn the reward. And therefore, his hijrah is for Allah and the Prophet. Uh, for Allah and Prophet. And if his uh, intention in making hijrah is for dunya or for a lady that he wants to get married to, and therefore he will earn or he will get whatever he has intended. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he said, Niyatul mu'min khayru min amali. The intention of a mu'min is better than his amal. And uh, therefore, in a, every uh, action that we do, there must be intention. There must be niyat. And intentions, uh, the place of intention is qalb, the heart. This is the place of intention. When you talk about renewing your intention or uh, having good intention in doing, uh, in doing uh, all uh, deeds, and if it comes from the heart, then the heart needs to be purified first. Then the good intention will come after that. If the heart is not purified, if the heart is not cleansed, then even you make good intention, you know, after your action, after your amal or during your amal, then the vices of the heart will come back. And then the amal will not be ikhlas. This is one of the common mistakes that people do. For example, they make intention, mashallah, I make intention of going to Majlis Ta'alim for, uh, to learn, to study, and to get benefit. Mashallah, these are all good. These are all uh, important. But shaitan will uh, not uh, stop there, will not stop uh, uh, making waswas on your heart after you make good intention. Even during, you, during your amal or after your amal also, Shaitan will come and try to nullify your amal by putting riyah inside your heart, ostentations, or putting self-admiration, uh, or putting takabbu inside your heart so that your amal will be nullified because of these things. And uh, we know that intention, when we want to make an amal, the intention must be the first thing. And we know that uh, Al-Imam uh, Abdullah bin Alawi al-Haddad, Qutbu Da'wa wa Durshad, uh, one of the big scholars uh, of Islam, the big scholars in Hadramaut, uh, he thought asked that every time when you want to enter in the gathering of knowledge, you should recite the intention. Therefore, your amal, inshallah, will be ikhlas after that, uh, which is nawaitu ta'allum wa ta'lim. Uh, I make the intention in learning and teaching. Even, for example, if you are a teacher, the intention is to learn and to teach. The teacher cannot say that, oh, I come to impart knowledge. First and foremost, the intention must be for himself or for herself. When he wants to impart the knowledge, whether you are a religious teacher or you are a secular teacher, the intention... Uh, 
Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> so we were talking about intention uh, of Al Habib uh, Abdullah bin Alawi Al Haddad, rahimahullah taala. Uh, where Imam Abdullah bin Alawi Al Haddad uh, he mentioned about uh, before coming for classes or before doing uh, uh, anything which is righteous, make the intention of nawaitu ta'alim wa ta'alim. I intend learning and teaching. When we seek knowledge, the most important thing is the knowledge that we seek increase our amal salih. This is what has been said by the Salafu Sal, by our pious predecessor. Any knowledge that we seek that doesn't increase our amal salih, then there's no use in it. So when we seek knowledge, there must be an increase in taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the first step to read is, of course, uh, niyat, uh, intention. Al-Imam uh, Hassan al-Basri, he said, uh, indeed, the dwellers of paradise, they enter paradise because of their intention. And the dwellers of hellfire enters the hellfire because of their intention. So there was the saying of Al Imam Hassan Al Basri, Rahimahullah <coughs> Taala. Therefore, uh, like Imam Abdullah bin Ali Haddad, as he mentioned, uh, the intention that he made was Nawaitu Taalum wa Taalim. I intend learning and teaching. Because learning, there's a special reward that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will give you. Among the reward that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will give is that those who learn for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah will ease his path. To Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, anyone who seeks knowledge in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will die in a state of shaheed as a martyr. They will be raised up. Uh, their rank will be raised up to the, to the rank of shaheed. So, if we talk about shaheed, are those who earn the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who will not be accountable for their deeds in Akhirah. That means they will enter Jannah be very Hisab. They will enter Jannah without any reckoning. That's how big it is. The reward. Where you, when you have intention and at the same time you execute it, you carry it out properly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also he mentioned, Nawaitu ta'alu wa ta'ali wa tadakkur wa tadkir. Reminding myself and reminding others also. <clears throat> it is easy to remind other people but not easy to remind yourself or receive reminders. Sometimes there are people who are so ego when someone reminds them it hits them, it hits their ego. They cannot accept. They cannot accept advice. Uh, especially those who learn more and more and more knowledge without the proper tarbiyah from a teacher, from a spiritual teacher. And the more they learn, the more they study, the more egoistic they are. Therefore, when you want to tell someone, when you want to advise someone, sit inside your heart, you are reminding yourself first and you are reminding other people. And whatever you say, you are reminding yourself. If you are telling people to stop doing this ma'asiyat, then you are reminding yourself to stop doing it. If you are reminding people to do a dhikr, to recite dhikrullah, or to read the Quran, you are reminding yourself to to read the Quran and to make zikir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, this intention, when you make all this kind of intention inside your heart, uh, it must be kept inside your heart and inside your mind. You have to make sure that when you are doing it, you, are, you know you are doing it, what is the objective and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, you are not, you, know, you will not go astray. And anytime when shaitan comes and try to trick you, you will remind back. You have to remind yourself back. I am learning to remind myself and to remind others. I am learning, I am teaching to learn and also to teach. This is how you guard your heart. This is how you guard your heart. From Riyadh, from ostentations, from Tatabu, from Hassan, and all these things. This is how you guard your heart. Because our heart, Imam al Ghazali, he said that our heart, uh, every day there is a heavy downpour on our hearts. Heavy downpour of whispers, heavy downpour of khawatir, 
of uh, thoughts. It's a heavy download. There's a lot of things that goes to our heart. A lot of things. At one moment, you know, Nabi SAW said, the, the intention of Imam Abdullah bin Ali Haddad, uh, uh, I think my intention is not pure. Lah. Maybe that's why it's always cut off. Uh, I need to always uh, recite the intention of Imam Al Haddad, inshallah. And after this, the Zoom will not be cut off anymore, inshallah. Ever Imam Abdullah bin Ali Al Haddad, uh, he used to make uh, this intention at the beginning of uh, any lesson or before studying a book. As uh, we were saying, Nawaitu uh, ta'allum wa ta'alim wa ta'zakur wa ta'zakir wa nafa' wa al-intifa' And he make intention of benefiting himself, benefiting myself and benefiting others. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ida mata ibn Adam, in kota amalu illa min thalat. <coughs> is the son of Adam <coughs> passed away <coughs> all his amal will be cut off except for three one of them is ilmin <coughs> yuntafa'bi knowledge that <coughs> benefit others so <coughs> the ulama they mention if you want the, your knowledge to benefit others it must benefit yourself first. if you want other people to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through you you must fear Allah first. If you want your family members to receive tawfiq, to receive guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal, to do ibadah, you do it first. Then it will have an impact on other people. Another common mistake, you know, people say, you know, I've been advising my child, I've been advising my parents or my siblings to do this, to do that, but they are not doing it. It's so difficult for me to tell them and so on and so on because you're not benefiting yourself. So benefit yourself. Your intention must be benefiting yourself. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ibda bin nafsik. Everything that you start must start from yourself. Like for example, the people of Ahli Zikir. The people of Ahli La Ilaha illallah. How do they benefit that kalimat La Ilaha illallah to many other people, they start from themselves. They practice on their own first. They do it first. They make sure that that kalima la ilaha illallah goes inside their chest, goes inside their heart. And they are istiqamah in doing that. And the samarad, the, the fruits, it bears fruits where the light of dhikr can be seen inside them. Where their akhlaq gets better and better. Where it benefits them, automatically those who are around them will follow suit. Will follow them. Because their intention is to benefit themselves. Then slowly, bit by bit, the wife, the parents, the children. You know like how the Prophet wasallam. at first, when he received the first revelation, the first one who embraced Islam first was his wife, Sayyidatina Khadija. Then his closest friend, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Then his closest cousin, Sayyidina Ali bin Abdul Qadir. Then his closest sahaba from the Muhajirin, like Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, Abdul Rahman bin Awf, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, and so on. Then after that, bit by bit, because he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he benefited himself. His intention, when he received the revelation, his intention that he made be the closest servant of Allah, whereas he's already the closest servant of Allah. He's, he already become the most beloved servant of Allah. But his intention is always pure. Everything that he does, his intention is to benefit himself. That is where it bears fruits. That is where his akhlaq, which is the perfect akhlaq, but it gets better and better day by day. And when it gets better and better, when he reaches that kamal, that uh, uh, perfection, the state of perfection day by day, then slowly, bit by bit, more and more and more and more people people benefiting from him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after his passing away, until today, millions of people are still benefiting from the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muslims and non-Muslims. Why is that so? Because of his intention. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His intention is to Remind himself, his intention is to benefit himself, 
His intention is to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself. First. Then after that, the intention to benefit others. You don't uh, do something. You say, "Oh, my intention is to benefit others. I got no other intention. I just want to share so that people may know, people may need that, do that." But you don't benefit yourself. You, you yourself are not practicing it. Then it, it will not bear fruits. It will, doesn't have any baraka. So if you want baraka in your intention, you want baraka in everything that you do, do it on yourself first. Do it yourself. So this is what Imam Al Haddad, rahimahullah taala. He says every time when he wants to start a book or he wants to attend a lesson, you see, it's very benefiting. You see his uh, his uh, intentions of Imam Abu Bakr Al Alawi Al Hajjah. So he said, "Nawaitu ta'alum wa ta'ali." I intend learning and teaching. You see, he start from himself. First. I intend reminding myself and reminding others. I intend benefiting myself and benefiting others. Wal ifada, wal istifada, encouraging people. والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. and also encouraging people to hold fast to the book of Allah. encouraging people to hold fast to the book of Allah. all knowledge, the main source is Al Quran Al Karim and Sunnah Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. all knowledge. one of the another common mistake where the seekers of knowledge they do. Is that when they want to seek knowledge, they straight away they want to learn Quran and Sunnah, which is good. But you need to know there are subjects that is we abstract from the Quran and Sunnah, like fiqh, fiqh. When you get this knowledge of fiqh, it all comes from Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Where do you learn the soul? The ilmu tasawuf, the main source of tasawuf, is from Al Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ilmu tauhid, it comes from Al Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As how we learn, you know, in uh, university, there are subjects. Ah, there are subjects that you take. Uh, Anas, what subject you take? Electrical engineering. So you study physics, uh, electronic. Uh, Electrical engineering, electronics, and so on. So there's a specific subject, but he 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 will not be able to understand this, except if he, if he has already if he has he has basics of science, for example. Uh, he's unable to understand this except if after he had took his PSLE O level, A level, then he's able to understand this. The same thing as our religious knowledge, we need to study from the most basic. Not jump into encyclopedia. You don't expect a kindergarten K1 boy or girl to open an encyclopedia and understand encyclopedia. We are kindergarten students of uh, religious knowledge, so we don't straight away open the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and after that we we think that we understand everything that is in the Quran and Sunnah. This is one of the most common mistake that has been done by university students. Sorry to say this, but this is the fact. They open the Quran, they open the Sunnah, which is nothing wrong to do that. But after that, they read and they understand on their own, and they misinterpret it. They misinterpret it because they do not have the foundation. When you are in kindergarten, you learn very basic English: A for apple, B for boy, C for cat, D for dog, E for elephant. F for fish, G for gorilla, and so on and so forth. Then after that, bit by bit, you learn vocabulary, grammar, construction of sentence, comprehension, composition, and so on and so forth. Until you know, mashallah, you are able to take your O level, your A level. You can write essays, you can uh, you know uh, write thesis because you have a very found strong foundation of English language. So the same thing when you want to study knowledge. Alam, religious knowledge, the intention must be right. The intention is that you need to learn from the basic first. If your intention is, oh, I want to get close to Allah and to get close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you do not know the method, how do you do it? That is also dangerous. Also, even those who are being radicalized, also their intention is to get close to Allah, but they do it the wrong method. They do it by killing people. 
They do it by misinterpreting uh, Al-Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they claim that they follow the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for us who are still amateur, novice, right? Novice, eh? amateur. Huh? That game, look at you want novice like that now. So the intention when you seek knowledge is to seek knowledge from the most basic. Learn the most basic of books of fiqh, of tawhid, of tasawuf. And when we seek knowledge, we need to seek knowledge from the people of knowledge. Those who are capable of imparting this knowledge. Even the scholars also, they have their own specialization. They have their specialization. Some specialize in fiqh. Some specialize in Tawheed, some specialize in Tawheed. So we need to find the correct one to learn this particular subject. If you want to learn Tafsir, you need to study from Ahlu Tafsir. Like in the past, the one who is really Ahlu Tafsir, like Ustaz Abdullah al Jufri. It's Ahlu Tafsir. If you want to study Tafsir of Quran, then study from him because he's the, he's the source, he's the main source. Or Ustaz Ahmad Son Haji, Ahlu Tafsir. If you want to learn Fiqh, like for example, in the past in Singapore, it's from Sheikh Omar bin Abdullah Al Khatib. He's a master of uh, fiqh. Like, you know, a, a very simple example if you're not well, if you are sick, you cannot go to mechanic. You don't go to mechanic to get uh, medicine. The mechanic cannot prescribe you medicine, you have to go to the doctor. But when you go to the doctor, also the same thing. A pregnant lady cannot go to the heart doctor, you must, she must go to the gynae. And the same thing when uh, you have heart problem, you don't go to the gain. So, the, all this includes in intention also. So, not only the intention, like for example, you, it must be purely, sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is good. But at the same time, we need to know where to start off, where to kick off. From where we must seek knowledge, from whom we must seek knowledge. The ulama said, Al ilmu yukhadu min afwahir rijal. Knowledge is, been, is taken from the tongue of the scholars, the tongue of those ulama who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whose heart, whose intention, is, there's nothing inside them except for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, our advice, our advice is that. Uh, we don't end the Zoom session just by uh, only writing points, which is good. But we need to have some uh, thoughts and some uh, tafakkur, some thinking, what to do next? What do we lack of? Now I'm, I know already my intention in doing everything, I must do it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. But how do I start off? Therefore, Ali Imam Al-Ghazali, he said, when you want to seek knowledge, seek the ilmu fardu'ain first. We are sorry to say this, but many students who are in tertiary level, also, even basic wudu, also, he doesn't know it. Or salat also, if you ask, what is the arkan of salat? They are unable to tell everything, which this is a basic knowledge where we need to seek first. Even, uh, sorry to say, even ladies also, they are unable to differentiate which one is menses, which one is istihaba. Whereby a lady who has reached the age of puberty, they need to know this. They need to differentiate this. They need to know that when they are menses, they are not allowed to pray, but they, when they are having istihaba, it is still wajib upon them to pray. But how to differentiate this? But therefore, all this needs knowledge, needs ilm. And knowledge need to be seek, need to... to we need to talaki from a teacher. So when we learn all this ilmu, ibadah, the things that which is wajib upon us to study, so therefore we know as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what to do and what, and what not to do, then Allah will cast a light inside our heart. Allah put a nur inside our life. Because we have that ilm. We have knowledge now. We know how to Go ibadah to Allah, the methods of doing ibadah to Allah. Then the next thing is the seeker of knowledge, the intention. They must think of another thing, 
of another knowledge where the more knowledge they seek, the more knowledge they have, the more humble they are. The more tawabu they are. It's called al mutasawu Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al-Hibli, one of the Sheikh of Shadili Tariqah, he said, Man zada fil akhlaq, zada fi tasawu. Anyone whose akhlaq increase, his tasawuf increase. Huh. Anyone whose akhlaq increase, his tasawuf increase. Then we need to seek this knowledge, also, which is very important. Because nowadays we are in a society whereby people are, are all chasing for dunya, for the materialistic, for name, for fame. You know, people are chasing to be praised. To be known, they uh, they want to, to to show off whatever they can show off. You see, this is dangerous for the heart. It destroys the amal. It destroys your your ibadah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If there's no knowledge of this, and you do not rectify this, even you seek knowledge and you become a doctor or have a PhD holder, even you can write a thesis of 10,000 words also. But there's this, all these vices of the heart inside it will not go anywhere. There's no benefit in it. There's no benefit in it. Even though, for example, you say, oh, I, I write this thesis, I, I, for example, I signal it, I go to NUS after this, I get degree or master, or master. my intention is, MashaAllah. After that, I want to become an electrical engineer. Uh, electrical engineer. Uh, electrical engineer. What's the job? What's the? What can you do? You become. Ah, uh, so he wants to design one new zoom. So the zoom <laughs> will not be cut off anymore. Ah, uh, mashallah, that one is good. Ah, uh, we make dua, inshallah. May Allah give Anas uh, an idea. Of doing another one, one app like Zoom, uh, Zoomy. So inshallah, so the next time we have this <laughs> this class, it will not be cut off. Inshallah. Then there is a good intention. Uh, there is a very very good intention. No matter what what's your ambition is, whether you become a electrician or lawyer or doctor or teacher or mechanic or whatever it is. Uh, if you are able to purify your inner self uh, and you know the basics of ibadah to Allah, the ilmu fardu'ain, you are better off than the ulama also, who has vices of the heart. Uh, the ulama who has knowledge, but they don't purify their heart. But definitely, of course, the scholars who purify their heart, they are the warathatul anbiya, they are the inheritors of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We need to think of our future, other than the future of our dunya. We need to think of the future of our akhirah. Like for example, we plan ahead of our dunya future. We need to plan ahead of our future akhirah. Therefore, after putting all the intentions in order, it is good. Lillahi Taala. We need to know what do we need to do, how to execute it, and after that, persevere in doing it. And continue doing it, stay calm in doing it, and be sincere in in doing whatever we do. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will keep rewarding, keep rewarding, keep rewarding to us until we meet Allah Subhanahu Subhanahu wa Taala. Allahu Alam Yisawa. We have to stop here. We will open for Q and A. Anyone have question? Tafadhal. Thank you, Ustaz. We shall now move on to the Q&A. Please feel free to send your questions on the main chat or to me privately. For those who prefer asking the question directly, please use the raise hand function and unmute yourself when called upon. Let's take a look at some of the questions which we have in the chat. Ustaz, we have a question. 
it's good to seek knowledge through telaki but what if that knowledge that i want to learn i can't find a teacher who can teach it in the country that knowledge is only taught at overseas whereas you may or may not have enough money to go overseas There are there are many scholars in Singapore that you can talaki with, but the problem with us is that our hearts are blind. Therefore, seek help from Allah, pray tahajud, pray hajat, and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to open up for you one, someone who you are able to talaki with him or with her. Even in Singapore, so there is. There are, not there is, there are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, put uh, his scholars everywhere in the world. It is up to us, the sincere seekers, to seek it. And when you are, we are sincere, we will get, inshallah. Al-Habib Abu Bakr Al-Atas, the teacher of Habib Ali Al-Habshi, he said, uh, if uh, the seeker is truthful in seeking a teacher to guide him, he will find his teacher at, the, at, his, at his doorstep. Which means uh, it will be very easy for him to find one. Uh, it will be very easy for him to to find one. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up for us, inshallah. Even talaki nowadays, you can do it online also. You can do it online. For example, you are at home. The teacher is teaching online. And you have your book. And you listen. And you write down the notes. You will benefit it. You will benefit, inshallah. I give you an example. Uh, once a week, we have talaki with uh, our teacher Habib Abdullah al Mubdar uh, every Sunday after Isha. Alhamdulillah, I benefited. I benefited. And I really feel that uh, I'm learning a lot of things from him, even though through online. Uh, it's just my personal feeling. I feel that I'm sitting in front of him, with him, together with him, uh, while learning from him. So oh, he's Indonesia, I'm in Singapore, and I'm learning from him every Sunday. Alhamdulillah, he's a nikmat. So, so we can do that also. Uh, we can do, we can do that also. So correct our intention, and inshallah, we will be able to, to, to learn a lot of things. Thank you, Ustaz. We have another question. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Barakallahu fihum for his class. I wanted to ask you, how can we be sure that our intention when we do a ibadah is good and pure, that there is no riya in our action, for example? From the signs of ikhlas, min alamatul ikhlas, from the signs of ikhlas, you will not Remember the good ibadah, the good, the good deeds that you have done. So you will not say, today I have done this, I have done that. I have done Last week I have done tahajud, I have done this. That, this, are the, this is one of the signs of ikhlas. One of the signs of ikhlas is that you will always remind yourself and think about the shortcomings that you have and you need to rectify it, but at the same time you do a lot of ibadah. And you don't think of that ibadah that you are doing. These are the sign of ikhlas. Another sign of ikhlas is that when there is no ostentation, riya, is when you do an ibadah, whether you are being praised or you are being uh, uh, a hina, you are being hina, whether you are being praised or you are being uh, uh, criticized. There's no difference. You still do the ibadah. For example, setting up uh, this Zoom channel. For example, after the Zoom being cut off, 
Then go inside again, cut off, go inside again after this. Masha Allah, the feedback. The feedback, this Mr. Anas, get him out from NUSMS, for example. <laughs> but don't do that. Anas, Masha Allah, ikhlas. He doesn't care. You want to criticize me or not, I will still uh, continue my NUSMS. I will still continue this Zoom lesson. I will continue the IG live. I will continue to help out. To and live in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are signs of ikhlas. These are signs of there's no riya in your ibadah. Allahu akbar. Thank you, Ustaz. Are there any more questions from any of you? Please feel free to send on the main chat or to me privately. Okay, we have one more question privately, Ustaz. Assalamualaikum Ustaz, Jazakallah Khair al Jaza for this lesson. Can I ask what are some intentions that I can create leading a community when you know you are such a lowly person? What are some intentions that I can create leading a community when you know you are such a lowly person? And we don't uh, think ourselves as a lowly person. Uh, we don't think ourselves as a lowly person. All uh, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, they are servants that Allah loves, that Allah blessed. Uh, you don't think that you are a lowly person. But when you do something, you don't think highly of yourself and you don't think lowly of other people. Uh, we don't go to the extent that we, we hina kan diri sini, we, we criticize our own self to the extent that we go to the extent where uh, it shouldn't happen in that manner. For example, I give you an example. A scholar. He wants to be tawadu and uh, he wears a bermudas and a t-shirt go out. People ask, why are you not wearing jumpa and songko? Oh, tawadu. <laughs> so, this doesn't, doesn't suit you. You see? Uh, why are you are doing this? Because I orang bawahan. I'm a very lowly person. We don't do that, you see. We don't, we don't do that. Uh, it is good that you feel that, you know, we have shortcomings, we have things that we need to correct ourselves and so on. So the intention is continuing to uh, continue to purify yourself, continue to do ibadah to Allah, refrain from all ma'asyat. The intention is to earn the guidance of Allah. That is the first and foremost. Uh, this is why Imam Ghazali name his book Bidayatul Hidayah. Uh, earn the guidance of Allah. So that is the intention. So when we study, when we learn, when we do ibadah, we want to earn the guidance of Allah. This is why in Salah we say Ihdina Siratul Mustaqim. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal for, for guidance to the straight path. Uh, uh, Thank you, Ustaz. Are there any more questions? Please don't be shy. Just send. Please don't be shy to just unmute and speak. Just ask your question. It's okay. Ustaz likes to interact with us. So please, if you have any questions, just unmute yourself and just ask. Assalamualaikum Ustaz. Ustaz, can you hear? They're asking a question. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Ah. Okay, please continue. Assalamualaikum Ustaz. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. 
Yes. Because uh, uh, when we set an intention, from time to time, we will uh, have this uh, demotivation uh, towards the intention. So how, how do we like renew our intentions from time to time? One of the ways to always have that motivation is to know the stories of our pious predecessor. Get to know them better. Read about them. Read about our pious predecessor. In their stories, they are baraka and light. No. When you are demotivated, go and read about stories like about Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani or Imam Al Ghazali. Imam Al Haddad, or uh, the Habaib of Hadramaut, uh, read about them. Read about their mujahada, how they, how they strive to uplift their soul, how they strive to curb their lower desire. And when we read this, it gives us motivation to be better. Uh, so do that. You see, that would be that 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 would be the medicine for it. One of the best medicine. Of course, definitely. Uh, more to it, definitely, when we read the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that would be the best, of course. As the ulama said, "Dikru salihin tanzilu rahma." Remembrance of salihin, Allah will uh, send down mercy. If mentioning the salihin, Allah will send down the mercy. What more mentioning the best of salihin, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Let's imagine the mercy that Allah will send out. So this is how you motivate yourself. You know, like sometimes, you know, a sing, singer, they want to sing, they cannot sing. Then uh, after that, when they hear Siti No Haliza voice, oh, motivate them. Like that. Uh, that is how it, uh, that is. How it is. Uh, or the people of dunya, for example, they do not know how, uh, they are down, you know, they want to they want to show, they want to perform one performance or uh, dinner and dance at NUS. Uh, they are demotivated. So, but when they look at their friends dress up, you know, the people of junior dress up, oh, they are motivated now. They are motivated. <laughs> you see? So, the mass is here. So, the same thing when you are demotivated to do an ibadah. We should learn about those who are always motivated to do ibadah. That is where you get the energy from, the spiritual energy from. Yeah. What's your name, Muhammad? Muhammad Shahid. Oh. Thank you, Ustaz. Thank you, Ustaz. We have another question. Actually, I wanted to ask this question also when someone actually sent this to me. So how do we motivate ourselves to study sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when it is secular in nature? For example, political science, history. Okay, when you are studying uh, political science, history, uh, or other subjects, you can do it with the intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as all these subjects, they are fardu kifaya. They are ilmu fardu kifaya. Like for example, uh, engineering. Uh, like Anas, engineer. If there's no people like Anas, we will not gather here. Even though the Zoom was not good. But because of them, we are gathered here. Because of the knowledge that they seek, uh, they are able to create Zoom and so on and so forth. So these are all part of Kifaya. If the intention is to gather people for gathering of knowledge and gathering of zikr, they will earn, uh, they will earn reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing as the doctors also. The intention is to, to, to help people who, people who are sick. The one who cure us is Allah. But through the doctors. So if you go to the secular school and you learn about medicine 
and the intention is for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla to help people. You will have reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So this is also among the sincere intention. But at the same time, when you are learning all these things, you must not forget to learn the fardu ain. That is the most important thing that we discussed just now. That we should have, we should, we must equip ourselves with that fardu ain. Then after you equip yourself with that fardu ain of ilmu fiqh, tauhid, and tasawuf. Then after that, whatever you want to study, you want to learn political science, or you want to learn whatever it is, tafadol, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And definitely another thing is that to have this continuous sincere intention, we need to be with those who are already sincere with Allah. We need to be in their company. Uh, we need to be in their company. Then there is how. How we, we gain that sincerity? Like for example, if you want to to be a footballer, you need to be with the footballers. You need to spend a lot of time with them, play soccer with them, and so on and so on. Then you'll be one of the footballers. The same thing, you want to be a sincere servant of Allah Azza wa you need to be with them. Continuous a company with them. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Ustaz. We have one last cave. Okay. We have two more questions. We might be doing particular continuous ibadah, but over time we might do the same ibadah the exact same way externally. But internally, our hearts and our intention might be wavering or changing, like feeling like our iman is low. So, should we stop that ibadah or what can we do? Should not stop any ibadah. All ibadah are good. Earning reward. Al Habib Ahmad bin Hassan al Atas, he mentioned, ikhlas comes later. Do the ibadah first, even though there's no ikhlas. Do the ibadah, then the ikhlas will come later. If you wait for ikhlas, you will not do the ibadah. Can you understand this? So when you're doing the ibadah, make the intention of ikhlas, but when you are walking in that path, definitely there will be attacks from right and left, from shaitan and nafsu. But continue, continuing in doing the ibadah and strive to get ikhlas until you are ikhlas. That's how you do it. But never ever stop doing an ibadah. Because stop do, stopping doing an ibadah for the sake of others is riya. And doing ibadah for others is shirik. What Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, is it? Thank you, Ustaz. We have one last question. How do I renew my intentions to remove feelings of riyah when wearing nice clothes with songkok and all for classes when many do not, although there is nothing wrong with it? How to remove? Yeah, wearing nice clothes. Allah says, "Subhanahu wa taala, khudu zinatakum in the kulli masjid. Wear the best clothes when you want to enter the mosque. This is in the Holy Quran. Wear the best clothes, but not overwhelming. Not overwhelming." That's why baju kurung, kain, or seluar panjang, long pants, sorry, sorry. Uh, long pants, uh, wear baju kurung, long pants, or juba, with songko, use the best clothes. Before you wear your clothes, make the intention, Lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, in the middle of it, maybe, you know, when you come for class, uh, especially when there are ladies, you know, seated at the back, and you prasan, you know it's prasan. Prasan means you are short as an area. Full? Full of yourself. F O L, full. Bloody full of yourself. You are a bloody full of yourself where you think that people, <laughs> that people are looking at you. But nobody is looking at you, so. Everyone is looking at the one who, <laughs> who is conducting the class. Not at you. They are not interested in you. So think that way. Then inshallah, Allah will remove the riyah from your heart. Inshallah. 
and uh, and also think that Allah Subhanahu Taala is watching us. Allah Subhanahu Taala is watching us, so Allah is looking at us. So it is more important that Allah is watching us rather than other people watching us that we are good looking or we are beautiful. Of course, at first, uh, at first, it's it's not easy, definitely. But uh, when you get used to it, inshallah, you'll get more ikhlas. Like you know, like someone who is not well, you cannot get you cannot get cured by overnight. You need time, you see. We need time to get cured, but we need the medication. We need to get treated. How do you get treated? By coming for class. How do you get treated? By sitting with the ulama. How do you get treated? By listening to, to 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 the words of Allah, to the words of the Prophet Sallallahu and to the words of Ali Hikmah. But bit by bit, bit by bit, then Allah Azza wa Jal will will purify your heart until there's no riya really. Inshallah. Ah, oh, Allah wa Okay. Thank you, Ustaz, for all the knowledge that you have shared with us. May Allah bless and you bless you and protect you always. It has been the greatest honor for all of us to be in your presence and to seek knowledge from you. And so, this brings us to the end of our session. But before we close, do allow me to share a few announcements. Inshallah, Ustaz Mukhtar's series on making intentions will run concurrently alongside Ustaz Dr. Faisal's Void series. We will be having three short follow-up Instagram live sessions on the dates and times shown on the screen. Inshallah, each of those sessions would be 15 minutes long and they would guide us to put what we have learned into practice by giving some examples related to the current context. We sincerely hope that all of you would continue attending all of our sessions by both Asatiza, Inshallah. Before we end off today's session, may we request Ustaz to give a closing dua. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma ya azim wa sultan, ya gudim al ihsan, ya daim al ya'am Ya kathir al jiwa, ya wasim ataa, ya khabir al bihdi wa sallim halim al ajah salli wa rabbi ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala sallim wa 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 sallim وَيَمَا أَمَنَ كُلِّ الْمَقِيَّ يَسِرَ عَلَيْنَا فِي الْعَزِيزِ الْزِيمَ عَسِيَ عَلَيْكَ يَسَوَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَحْكِمَ الْدَنَا تَسِيرَ عَلَيْهِ يَسِيرَ عَلَيْهِ يَسِيرَ عَلَيْهِ يَسِيرَ عَلَيْهِ خَبِيرُ الْمُزِيرِ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَخَابُ مِنْ يَخَابُ مِنْ يَخَابُ مِنْ يَخَابُ مِنْ مَنْ يَخَابُ مِنْ 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 اللهم إنا نسألك زيارة الذي بارزت اللهم شعات الجسد شعات الجرس أو بدنا قبل المشاهدة عند المغفرات من بعد المعافين الرجس أمان من العذاب ونصيب من الدين نرجو من نظر إلى وجه الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام الحمد لله رب العالمين. ما يأكل الجزاء إذا سني شاط كم؟ Alhamdulillah, with that, this event has come to an end. We thank you all for joining us and being part of this blessed gathering. We hope to see you all in the upcoming G2G sessions, inshallah. May Allah continue to grant us many more of such opportunities of being in the presence of our teachers and the people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we may always be reminded of Allah and our hearts may be continuously purified by being in their presence. Before we disperse, we'd like to apologize on behalf of the G2G committee for any shortcomings on our part, especially the technical issues. Please share your feedback on today's session through the link provided to you in the chat, as it will help us improve and serve you better. Do follow us on our Instagram page and Telegram channel, which have been collated on the card link also shared in the chat to receive regular updates for the program details, key takeaways from our sessions, as well as other useful information. If you would like to binge watch the previous sessions from last year's Power Series and this year's Voyage Series, please check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us end with a speak of Farah and Surah Lasser. <laughs> On behalf of the G2G committee, we would like to wish all NUS students the very best for your midterms and assignments. May Allah peace. Thank you and have a great weekend. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.